All right, everybody, I have the special honor of, oh my goodness, we've been trying to do this interview for so long, since our last album. I have been a fan for a very, very long time. So excited to welcome to TKIF, thank you, KempireRadio.com. Faith Evans is here with us. What's up? Oh. Faith, first of all, your new reality show, R&B Divas on TV One, is such a great show. Everyone is raving about it. You know, a lot of people know why you, you wanted to put this together, but how did this all c come about? How did, you, how did everyone decide, okay, Monifa's going to be a part of it, Selena's going to be a part of it, um, you know, Faith is going to be a part of it. How did this all come together? Um, it's a bunch of ideas that came together by divine order. Um, mm. Nikki, um, actually, this particular cast, Nikki had um, an idea trying to put together a show with um, herself Selena, Kiki, Monifa, and a few other um, singers mm -hmm. um, that were Atlanta-based. And she came to me, who, and um, before that, actually, I had already been working on a few shows. I did a few pilots and had a couple of networks interested in doing some shows with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just really wasn't, I know I'm not, in a, I'm not, you know, the one that's going to give the whole, you could be in my house and follow me around all the time type of thing. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of waited it out and, you know, she came to me asking me to come on board as an EP with her show to help her pitch it. Okay. And then taking the meetings, a lot of the, you know, the networks and the production companies wanted to know what my involvement would be mm -hmm. on camera, which initially I didn't have plans to do much at all. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, we all, all the ladies that ended up in the cast, we ended up um, at this Grammy celebration for Kelly Price, which was, I hope I was one of the hosts of this pre-Grammy party, with, which Whitney attended and was her last performance. Yeah. And um, it was just kind of crazy because after that night, you know, by this time, Nikki had already talked to me and I said, I will help her pitch her show. And she said she, trying to, she thought she wanted to be about them going on tour together and, you know, different stuff. So I was just kind of shaping the, the idea for the show. And I'm like, you know what, I think that would be a lot production perspective, you know, to be on the road unless we had a tour that was already up and running, you know, which we did. Mm -hmm. So um, after the night, um, after losing Whitney, this idea that I had to do this project with all these R&B singers actually just kind of, I just had a revelation that it was really like, okay, you should do that album and maybe, you know, make that what the show is about since you already have people interested in being in business with you, yada, yada. So I kind of, you know, was like, Nikki, maybe we should try and you know, let's shape the, the um, we, we filmed the sizzle on our own, so we kind of just had the idea to make it about us making this project, about me putting together this charity album, mm -hmm. and the whole, you know, give, in honor of Whitney and, and giving back to the Whitney Houston Academy, you know, those were afterthoughts, you know, just trying to figure out a way to honor her memory, since, you know, I lost certainly did, you know, give, give me that push to go ahead and, and do this project. So, I mean, it was, like I said, a bunch of different ideas that came together, by divine order, because, you know, she had her, her idea. She already had these ladies, plus some, some other ladies who ended up doing other things. Okay. But um, now that the project, you know, that the show is, is a success, definitely there was a long wish list of women that I even wanted to be on this R&B Divas album, but because of the timing and the fact that we had to get it done while we were in production of the show, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to make that happen with everybody that I wanted to. But we are definitely looking at other installments in other cities because... Once we started filming, I mean, once we pitched the show, of course, they wanted to focus on just one city because it was easier from a production standpoint to, yeah. to base, you know, to base it in Atlanta. So um, while there were plenty of other people who I, I, would, I courted to be a part of the cast, and mm -hmm. hopefully they're still interested when we, you know, get into other installments. But, you know, what you see is the girls that, that Nikki already had on board in mm -hmm. addition to myself. Most definitely. Well, Faith, you know, now that, you know, everyone has seen, you know, this is, we're on like the third episode. Uh, yeah. You know, how, how are you, how, how, how is like your, you know, your friends, family and fans been responding to the show and you being on the show? And, you know, this is the first time you really kind of delved into exposing your life and that kind of thing. Um, well, it's been very good feedback from, from all over the place. And, yeah. you know, I'm glad that people enjoy the show. But, I mean, as far as me, the people that know me, they know me. They're getting, you know, prob you know, I'm, they're happy that, you know, even though it's not in my house, in my everyday life, and yeah. following my children around, you're still getting the part of my personality that you may not otherwise get just from a record or from an interview, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're happy. Like, I'm glad people get to see your humor or, you know, that side of you. But... You know, as far as how I am on the show, that's the same me all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you, 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 you mentioned Whitney a lot, you know, in the, in the development, developing of this, you know, charity album. What's your fondest memory of Whitney Houston? Um, wow. One of my fondest memories, I want to probably think, is at my 30th birthday party in Atlanta. Mm. And at the neighbors, she and Bobby were my neighbors yeah. at that time. And um, she came to the party, and I remember all my friends like, Whitney's looking for you before she even got inside. Whitney's looking for you. You know, about five minutes later, she comes around the corner screaming my name, writing on Bobby Brown's back. <laughs> like, hey, <what? laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, you know, that was, that was, that was classic Whitney, just, you know, having a good time. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I loved her. I, I, I love that I got to know the person she was, you know. So, yeah. I know what it is, those people that were her family and friends, I know the Whitney that they knew. You, you know, you, you were able to see Whitney that last week of her life. You know, what, what, what was that experience life, uh, like? You know, because I'm sure you guys didn't get a chance to see each other a lot, of, a lot but you, you were right. there that last, you know, that, you know the, her last performance, pretty much. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I was on the stage, you know, giving a shout out, like, that's my dog right there. And she in the corner going, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> but what, we didn't get to talk much, but before the event, she had Pat call me to make sure I was going to be there. And mm -hmm. um, she came up to me right as I was going on stage, and we, we hugged, and I'm like, I love you. She said, I love you more. I love you more. So, I mean, I, I was just happy to be able to see her and just tell her I love her, you know. Even if, you know, of course not knowing that was the last time, but I'm very happy that I was able to see it because we didn't get to see each other often. Probably the last time before that we were in the airport and I was screaming her name. And, you know, of course a lot of people screaming her name, but when she looked back and saw it with me, she ran all the way back through the security team. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 she was, a, she was a, just a fabulous person. You know, you, you mentioned that you, you guys are neighbors in Atlanta. Um, have you spoken to Bobby Christina since everything has happened? And, and you know, what what kind of solace have you given for her? Um, I haven't spoken to Bobby Trish directly um, via email. And she and my daughter, you know, speak via email, mm -hmm. have spoken via email since the funeral a few times. But um, I always call Whitney's assistant and, and her um, family and staff just to, you know, just to, say hi and just to remind them, you know, just if Chrissy ever needs me. I know how that is in, some, in that, a moment like that. You know, you may want to just be in your own world. So I yeah. don't want to invade and, and be overbearing. But I always, you know, call her assistant Ulysses and let him know, you know, make sure you, you know, got my number. And if your number changes, let me know. Just if Chrissy ever needs to call me for anything, she knows I'm here, you know, mm -hmm. just for she. But, you know, I know that she knows that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she knows how to reach me. So when, when, when and if it's ever necessary you know i know she knows that i'm here for her yeah and you mentioned that you you know doing this r&b divas album this charity album what is the, you know when can we expect this album to come out and what can we expect from this album like who who else is featured besides of course the you know the stars of r&b divas um who else can we expect on this album and when can we expect it well r&b divas faith evans r&b divas the mm -hmm. album is going to be released october 2nd okay. and um in, a, in addition to myself, um, you have, of course, Nikki Gilbert, Kiki Wyatt, Monifa, Selena Johnson. Um, every, all the ladies in the cast have um, an, a solo song on the album, as well as two songs that we did together, which include the theme song to the show, Loving Me, and a Love song it. called Sister Friend. Mm -hmm. I have um, four, three solo, four solo records on the album, two of which are the first two singles of the album. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's a, a remake of one of my old records on there, a live version. And then there's um, also a song with myself, Kelly Price and Fantasia. Oh. And then Kelly Price, um, a song with just Kelly Price. So, um, again, it's not the, the list, the wish list that I have, but it's just the essence of time and mm -hmm. people's schedule availability. Um, you know, we did an excellent job. It's a great album. It's real soulful R&B music. And I think it's something for everybody on there. You know, there's mm -hmm. songs with with messages of, of love, of relationship love. There's songs with messages of hope and, you know, just the whole sisterhood, which is what this project was all about. So mm -hmm. I think people will thoroughly enjoy it. It's, it's very much in the spirit of a wait until a sale type of sound. Wow, wow, wow. 
You, you mentioned that you, you had a wish list. Can you name some of the ladies that you wanted on the album but didn't have a chance to, you know, because of scheduling or whatever it may be? Um, Mo was one of them. Lettucey, um, Coco, SWV. Um, 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 who else did we reach out to? Mo, Led, um, um, Layla, mm-hmm. Hathaway. Uh, I actually asked Anita Baker, but, you know, I know she's at a place right now where she does her shows and, you know, she just lays in the cut. And she did tell me that my job right now is to just sit back and watch y'all do y'all thing, you know? Mm. So, <laughs> but she said, welcome on my stage any day, Faith. <laughs> but I respect, she respectfully declined, okay. <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> she didn't even quite decline, but I, I took, I knew, I knew what she meant. <laughs> yeah. You know, Faith, you know, we, you know, one of the big things, you know, here on Kempire Radio, we celebrate R&B. We're, we're, we're probably one of the, the biggest supporters of R&B and bringing it back to, to, to the days that, you know, you know, in the 90s when it was the biggest thing out. Um, what are your thoughts on the state of R&B, and wh- who are some artists, some new artists that you feel are doing R&B justice? Wow. There's a lot of new artists that I really like, and, I mean, I would have to sit and think of, you know, because I listen to different music with yeah. my kids and in my car all the time. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of music that I like, really, but I don't... I think that what has changed is this time, you know, and the way music is received. And, you know, I don't necessarily feel like R&B is dead or what I bring to music is is an uh, old school way. Yeah, you know, yeah, I debuted a few years back, but, I mean, it's, I know that there's still an audience for the music I make. And just like there's an audience for the, excuse me, for the crop of new talent that's coming out, there's always going to be, you know, a new artist that's, mm-hmm. that's dope. So. I mean, I, when I see people like Frankie Beverly and Mays who haven't had a record out in 20 years and can gig all throughout the year and make a very good living, then I know good well it's not dead. So <laughs> I'm not mad. It's just up to you to figure out a way to, you know, to, to ride the wave and, and to make it work for you. And, and you know, it, even sometimes for us that means tapping into other revenue streams. It means sometimes doing a reality show to push whether it is your product, your music, or whatever else you're working on, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there, there's... Just like the way our music is received has changed, the way that, you know, the fact that we're able to be on TV has changed as well because it wasn't like that 15 years ago. So, yeah. you know. Most definitely. You know, I, so I see that Miss you know, um, Wallace is actually going to be on the R&B Divas. You know, a lot of people always, every, I'm sure every time you get interviewed, they, they ask, you know, what's the current status of, you know, the investigation behind Biggie's death? Mm. I'm sorry, I was drinking some water. No <laughs> um, wait, was that your question? What's the status of the investigation? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that. We wow. are still waiting and hoping that, you know, that they'll do the right thing. The case is not, it hasn't been closed. We kind of just put, we're not going to spend money just fighting something and waiting for a court date when we can always revisit it when you guys tell us you're ready to do the right thing. So basically, it's just no need for us to keep spending dollars paying attorneys for these people to tell us the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. we, we feel like they know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, they know what happened. And, you know, it's obviously a big cover-up. And, you know, we still keep hope that one day just some, someone will be brought to justice. Yeah. Um, for it. I mean, it's clearly not about money or anything. We've spent millions of dollars just on lawyers, but, you know, to see that you're really being made a joke of and, and yeah. the people you depend on to do the right thing, you know, and to, to, to take care of these type of things are, are really preventing it from happening, preventing justice. So um, mm-hmm. it's just unfortunate, you know. What do you, you know, what do you tell, you know, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, you know, what do you tell little Chris about about his dad and, and, and what happened? Well, um, there's not much that we have to tell him. I think, you know, his, when he was growing up, between myself, his stepdad, and his grandmother, mm-hmm. and the time he spends with all the big friends, you know, when we do go back east or when they come back here. I, and then to add to that, the fact that he got to play his dad, I mean, yeah. that certainly enhanced his understanding of who and how important Big was. But, mm-hmm. I mean, on a personal note, I mean, he, he, he was he's now able to put these stories together and see them in a, from a different perspective now that he's getting a little older as well, you know? Mm-hmm. Are, are any of your kids showing um, signs of love for music, either rapping or singing or anything like that? Well, they all are musically inclined. My daughter wow. actually, since her first year at the class, gave us 
um, School of Music at NYU. Wow, congratulations. She's a writer, producer, and engineer, all of that. Um, she plays, so... Um, CJ can sing and rap, but, you know, he dabbled in it for a minute, but he doesn't want to be, like, an artist. He, mm-hmm. he says he wants to be behind the camera, so he wants to go to film school. Okay. Um, and my other son, Josh, he makes his own records in his room. <laughs> so, I guess, he's wow. like, well, please, y'all hear me or not. <laughs> you got your own little, uh, uh trip there, I'm music. For my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he's really dope. Actually, he's like a, he sings like a bird. Oh, but wow. you know, over here at school, you know, they gotta they gotta understand the importance of of having the education as well. So, you know, but they're able to do a lot of stuff, but I'm just really like, Okay, we're not gonna put super focus on anything outside of school, you know, mm-hmm. until you achieve at least a certain a certain um degree, you know, a, a, a diploma at the very least. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, Faith, since, you know, since the last album, I was really excited to, to um, speak to you back then during, you know, during the process of that album. And I'm sure, you know, with the new R&B Divas uh, charity album, we're going to get a, a, some more um, Faith. But since that time, you, you, you've had a lot of different changes in your life, including now that you're, you're a single woman, right? Mm-hmm. You know, what's that transition been like? Um... Well, it's uh, it's only different because it's different because I'm used to. I mean, I was married most of my adult life, so mm-hmm. it's not like I dated much at all, if at all. Really, I wouldn't even say I ever had a real dating period <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> um, so, and I'm very guarded, and I don't like you know. I'm not. I don't like people in my space. I'm I'm very much a people person, but mm-hmm. when it comes to like really being in my personal space and in my home, and you know, I'm really guarded. So. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm scared. Like, I don't, mm, mm. So, um, so you're not I'm dating. like, I don't, you know, I'm, I may be putting the, the um, carriage before the horse, but <laughs> my thing is ultimately when you get involved with someone, you know, when you ultimately want to have intimate relations, that's my biggest fear. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? I'm too, like, <laughs> I don't want nobody touching me. Like, <laughs> like, like, like where you been? <laughs> I need to see all your test results. <laughs> No, that's smart in this I don't know what I'm going to do, but, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not tripping. I, I have way enough on my plate yeah. to keep so, me busy. But, you know, it's definitely something that I clown with my friends about all the time. You know, they're like, oh, what you, you're probably going to end up with a such and such a type of guy. Are you probably going to get with an old man? And I'm like, I ain't getting with nobody. <laughs> so, so, Faith Evans is, I ain't tripping. so Faith Evans is not dating now. I mean, I have friends, but I wouldn't say I'm dating at all. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> but you have to say you're very, you're very open and very, very revealing. We really do appreciate you taking the time out, you know, to be here and talk about everything. You know, we we, we pretty much covered <laughs> covered everything. But um, <laughs> but be, you know, one big thing that we we're, we're going to be talking about. We always have a question of the night on TKIF here on Campire Radio, and. This question is actually was inspired by um, Oprah's life class, and it was talking about women and why women are so mean to each other. And I, I thought it was perfect oh. because, because you you know you have this show R and B Divas where women are coming together um, for a cause. You know, but why do you think though in general that um, a lot of women are so mean to each other or competitive with each other? Wow, that's a great great something to think about right there. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Would, mm-hmm. Do you, do, and I'm not sure if, if her, if this is something that, that, you know, would you say on statistics or just a generalization, mm-hmm. but do you think it's something more so prevalent in our culture? You know, to be or honest. Is it just a, a generalized question. You know, to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't think so. To be, because from my experience in being in the workplace or uh, having a lot of different um, female friends, I, I definitely see it across the board. I don't think it's just in the African American African American right. community. I think it's across the board. It's definitely a generalization, but it's something that happens a lot. And I've and I've seen it as a guy. I've seen it amongst women and how women treat right. treat other women differently. It could have something to do with like, like for example, in the workplace, how historically a lot of a lot of um, you know, a lot of careers and a, a lot of jobs. Um, Oh, God, what am I going through right now? Um, in a lot of careers, you know, it's, a lot of careers are male-dominated industries, you know, yeah. a lot of industries, that's the word I was looking for, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. are male-dominated or have been historically, so it could stem from the, the fact of having to compete to prove yourself to the men with the women being the minority, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
um, or go back to even with, you know, in relationships, in, in personal relationships, whether they're um, intimate or whether they're just a family relationship. You know, it's male, male you know, things, a lot of things in life are, have been male-dominated for so long, so mm-hmm. I think that may have a lot to do with it. Just And we just don't look at it in, in that way, you mm-hmm. know, when we're dealing with each other. I personally, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever really had that problem. I'm not going to say, like, oh, I'm different than everything. <laughs> but, you know, like, I'm not one of those girls. I have, I know plenty of people who will just tell you, all right, oh, I don't get along with women. I don't. I don't. A quick, quick um, game with you. Okay. Okay. And it's called Finish This Sentence, okay? Mm-hmm. Life is. A blessing. The world needs. Love. I believe in. The power of God. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Love is. Amazing. R&B music must. Hmm. R&B music must must be good. Mm. If Frankie I, Beverly and Mays can still do shows <laughs> every day of the year. <laughs> I want to thank God. Mm. The person I most want to be proud of me is. Hmm. Well, aside from God, that would be my children. Mm. I am ready to forgive. Myself, for when I don't, you know, I'm ready to forgive. I don't know. I don't hold any grudges against anybody. Mm. Myself, for any grudges I may have ever held in the past, held in the past, I guess that would be it. I want my legacy to be? Um, One that inspires people and, yeah, one that inspires people and touches. Mm. What, What makes Faith Evans insecure? Oh, when I know that I haven't been working out and <laughs> I got a cute outfit I want to wear somewhere or <laughs> and I know I, I ain't been in the gym for a month or so and I know I'm a little fluffy. <laughs> yeah. What makes Faith Evans mad? When somebody try to play me. Hmm. <laughs> and that could be, you know, there's a lot of things that fall under that umbrella, but, you know, when you feel like somebody, are you trying to play me, like, don't play me stupid. <laughs> like, um, like play, play my, take play with my intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> what brings Faith Evans the most joy? Um, seeing my children happy. Mm. You know, it's so funny during the interview. What, what? This, a question popped up in my head is, you know, a lot of times when artists come here on the show, I mean, you've had a long catalog of songs of, you know, I have my favorite Faith Evans songs, but what are Faith's favorite? Favorite songs of of yourself of your discography. Um, one of them would definitely be "Life Will Pass You By," "Keep mm. the Faith," mm-hmm. um, "Where We Stand," mm. "On Faithfully." A song called "Tears Away" that was on Hats Funny. That's one of my favorites. Too. Yeah. You know, Faith. Anytime we have singers here in the show, and I know I know you're not feeling that well, but can you sing just a little something for our audience? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe okay. one of your faves. <laughs> you said, I'm sorry? Maybe one of your faves. Oh, no, then I have to really be loud. And I think <laughs> the people are working outside my house on my lights, so. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a concert. <laughs> I want to alarm them. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Um, your love is Wonderful, yeah, 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 and I don't want to lose you, so baby, do it again. Yes, babe. <laughs> Faith Evans here on Kempire Radio's TKIF. Faith, you know, it, it, this is R&B Divas Night on Kempire Radio, so we're celebrating the Divas. Monifa's going to be dropping by. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, yes. Mom. Yes, and Monifa, and, I, and we were trying to get Selena to, to uh, drop by as well. Uh, I just want to, I'm going to say the ladies, and I want you to just give me one word to describe them. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Nikki. Um, Busy B. <laughs> Kiki. One of a kind. Mm. Selena. <laughs> Feisty. Monifa. Spunky. And I'm just going to throw, since Kelly was on the last episode, Kelly Price. Sangin. Mm. You know, everyone wants to know, what's, what, what can we be on the lookout for in regards to the, the R&B Divas um, reality show? What's coming up? Um, well, you will see me launch my new hair product called Glass um, Air Gel okay. on the show. Um, of course, Nikki debuted her, debuted her bottle at Full Figure Fashion Week in New York. Um, we did an episode a week in New York, so we went to my mom's house in Jersey and hung out with some of my family and Miss Wallace and um, Selena's acoustic um, acoustic uh, album listening party that she did. So there's a there's a there's a few things coming up, and and some of which I know I'm forgetting too. Also, we filmed the last episode in New Orleans while we were there for the Essence Festival. Yeah, so that's the big concert that we see, the little snippets yeah. of, right? Yeah. Wow, that's going to be amazing. Amazing. Faith Evans here on Kempai Radio's TKIF for the very first time. I hope it's definitely not your last. It is not. It's not. It was so much fun. And um, actually, you know what? I'm laying, I was laying down when, I, when we started, but I ended up getting off the bed. So you probably made me feel better. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Faith, this is truly an honor for all of us. We, I, I know everyone's going to just totally embrace um, everything that you're doing now. The new music. We know We know the... Um, compilation charity albums coming out when is a faith evans album coming out um well i definitely not this year i had said you know i wanted the album out this year but that was before the show got picked up mm-hmm. and you know and this charity project even came to be so mm-hmm. you know it, it was an idea for a long time that i never knew i would pull off and then it was like okay i'll do it real fast but mm-hmm. So that kind of put my um, recording on the back burner for a minute. But I've been back in the studio since since we um, wrapped production. But since my um, injury, I have to take it easy for a couple of weeks. I have to actually get a little epidural procedure tomorrow. So I'm going to just take it easy for a few weeks, and then I'll be back in the studio. But I have a lot of material that I already, you know, started on. So, But probably next year. Are there any producers uh-huh. or songwriters you, you want to collaborate with? collaborate with I already know you're you're an amazing songwriter but who else do you want to collaborate with um I mean I don't really have any you know anybody that I can say I don't so much um I mean you know what I'm saying like it's usually kind of like if it happens it happens I'm not really tripping if somebody wants to work with me and they got something that I can work with then you know I usually you know usually it comes together that way yeah um so I don't I don't I won't say I have a wish list I mean I have already done some stuff with of course Chucky Thompson Mm -hmm. um Mike City I've been working with a collective called 1500 or nothing from LA um so you know I've got a lot of material already so I mean you know oh and and you know a bunch of people been hitting me on Twitter and sending me stuff that I actually been hearing a lot of stuff I like so mm. once I get to sort through it all you know who knows it might be a nice batch of you know people that I'm able to help you know get their name out there as well. Most definitely, you know recently I actually chatted with Claude Kelly and he talked about the session he did with you for Tears of Joy. What well, well, yeah. he gave he gave us his perspective on the session. You give us your pers- perspective in in that collaboration. Well, <laughs> I love the song. I thought it was an amazing record. Yeah. But I was a little nervous because Claude and Chuck were there, and I'm so used to being in the studio by myself with the engineer. And, and you know, I just I was a little nervous, so <laughs> I had to. I did like all the background and you know let him teach me the little parts I needed to be taught. But then when I needed to do my ad-libs, I was like, I kept trying it again, like one more time, and I was like, um, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just used to being by myself. Do y'all mind going out for a minute and? I call you back in to listen to it. <laughs> and I feel like they're probably looking at me like I'm crazy every time I do that, but I'm just so sincere. Like, I just clam up for some reason. It's not like a fear, but I just don't let go. I don't know. Especially when I'm doing my avids, I like to think them out and place them in the right places. Mm-hmm. And I'm just sitting in there with just me and the engineer. So when I see other people, it's just something in me just stalls. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know, you know, Claude compared compared you know your version of the song to you know the likes of an Aretha Franklin. 
Yeah, now, now that's the key. The thing is, the key of the song was a little low for me. We actually raised it the key, and then I did all the backgrounds and was like, I think it's still a little low. But then I'm like, I ain't doing all them backgrounds over, so, <laughs> so <laughs> let me make it happen. <laughs> and um, I was like, you know what, though? It's giving me Gladys Knight meets Aretha. I, yeah. I like that. I'll take it. Yes, most definitely. Faith Evans it's here. Faith, thank you so much for taking the time out. I hope you feel much You're better. Thank you. You're definitely thank one you. of the number one R&B divas. We appreciate you being here on the show. And many blessings on the show. We love the show, and we talk about it every week here on the show. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time out. All right. Have a Faith good one. Faith Evans, you too.